As a follow-up to my video on how to carve stone block tunnel portals out of blue foam insulation, several people have asked me how I make my mountains. I've adapted a method that I used on the indoor HO layouts in the past using plaster newspaper strips over wadded up newspaper. Outside I'm using quickcrete sand topping mix. The other materials I use are old coffee cans, a stick for mixing, chicken wire, cloth fabric, neoprene glove, latex gloves, an X-Acto knife, paint, brush, and solo cups. I use a 12 inch roll of chicken wire and work in sections. Cut the first piece to fit, then cut the second piece to fit. Here I'm cutting down one side of the second piece so that I can have tabs to interlock and connect to the first piece. Twist the loose ends that you just cut around the first piece. When you have two or more connected, you can shape the mountain by pinching and bending to get the form that you're looking for. This is my completed chicken wire form. Depending on the size, you may want to use supports. On this one, the chicken wire is not connected to anything, just stuck in the ground. This is the material I found for free. It's used shade cover from a nearby fern field. You can use burlap, old cloth, etc. and cut them into strips about 3 to 4 inches wide by 1 to 2 feet long. I put 1 to 2 inches of water in a coffee can and then add the cement. It's much easier to mix the cement into the water rather than the other way around. The consistency you want for this step is like a nice gravy. Once the cement is mixed to a gravy consistency, I dip the strips of material into the cement. Starting at one end of the strip, I try and keep it submerged as I pull it through the cement. Layer the soaked strips onto the chicken wire by overlapping at the seams. It is important to use latex gloves because the cement is caustic and will attack your skin. Don't ask me how I know. On my tall mountain, I started from the bottom and used a clothespin to hold the top of the strip to the chicken wire. You can then remove the clothespin when you overlap the next higher rug. When you get to the bottom of the can and there isn't enough cement left to dip the strips, use your hands to spread the remaining cement over the strips and smooth over the seams. You can see here that it is still flexible at this point. Gingerly add more, smoothing it over and hiding the seams. This is the first layer completed and how it looks when it's still wet. The next day it will dry to a lighter color. This became a hard shell, but it's still thin and fragile. Now that the first layer is dry, again I start with a couple inches of water and mix the cement into the water. It's much harder to go the other way.
For this step I'm using more cement and I want a peanut butter consistency. Before adding cement to the dry shell, I want to wet it down real good so it makes a better bond and it doesn't suck all the water out of the new cement. Now using neoprene gloves, apply the cement by hand onto the hard shell. I estimate that this layer is about a quarter inch thick. Latex gloves will work good for the first step, but for this step they tear and really messed up my fingers. Spread the cement onto the shell and let your fingers leave grooves. This is the just completed second layer, still very wet. Immediately go back to where you started and draw the X-Acto knife across the wet cement to carve in the strata. Keep it around the horizontal plane, but follow the contour around the outcroppings. You can see where I knocked out cement, but I just pick up a blob and replace it and keep on going. Here is the completed carving in the still wet cement. You see I vary the strata in sections like you might see in a rock clay. Once the second layer is dry I use a light gray latex house paint full strength and work it into all the crevices. Then I smooth it over to avoid any drips. This will fill the carving some and provide a cohesive look and add strength to the concrete. It's very important to let the base coat dry completely for a day or two before going to the next step. Here I take a very diluted brown latex, maybe 10 to 15 parts of water, and slather it on let it run down. I'm not too worried about the tunnel portal. I'll fix that in a minute. I just take a sprayer and wash the tunnel portals before the paint dries. Spray the water to wash down the paint so it looks natural. I may even spray the mountain with a few drops. After the diluted brown paint dries, I repeat the process with a black wash of thin black latex paint. And this is the final product. Thanks for watching and go out and build yourself a mountain.